So if you're interested in upgrading your gaming CPU, then you're in luck because today you've got some really good options. But that also means that making a final decision between them is pretty hard because they're all really good, especially because it's not just CPU versus CPU, you also have to consider the pros and cons of either platform here. And it is a slightly different experience depending on which one you go with. For example, DDR4 versus DDR5 memory, and you know how much of an upgrade path you're kind of looking at on either one. Those are the things that you should be considering as well. So that's the stuff that we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be looking at the benchmarks between these three CPUs and also talking about the extra stuff that you need to know. Now we're not going to be talking about the Ryzen 9s and the Intel i9s, although those technically are the fastest gaming CPUs right now, but realistically they're only a couple percent faster than the mid-range CPUs that we're going to be looking at today. In some cases they're actually a couple percent slower. So here are the three that I want to talk about. The new Intel i5-13600K, the AMD 76 600X and the previous gen AMD 5800X 3D. In terms of the spec differences, there's actually quite a bit going on here. Firstly, the new i5 is an absolute monster when it comes to the total cores and threads. It's technically a 14 core CPU, although eight of those cores are lower clocked efficient cores, which only really help in multi-threaded workloads. The other big difference, the amount of L3 cache, which is stacked onto the Ryzen 5800X 3D. Sure, it's not as new and shiny as the other two and it clocks quite a bit lower, but it has four times the cache of the 13600K and triple the amount of the 7600X. And then in terms of pricing, they're all pretty similar. You can currently buy the 13600K or 7600X for 300 US dollars, whereas the 5800X 3D is slightly more expensive at 330. But things get really interesting when we also factor in the cost of your memory and motherboard. The Ryzen 5800X 3D has a mountain of affordable B550 motherboards that it can be dropped into along with DDR4 memory, whereas the new Ryzen 7600X requires slightly more expensive DDR5 memory and motherboards that cost about double. As for the new 13600K, well, you've got the option there of either DDR4 or DDR5, as well as Z690 or Z790 boards that can support CPU overclocking. The most cost-effective route for the 13600K though would be a B660 board, like this one here along with 16GB of DDR4 3600, and that's actually a setup that will be looking at today. Now something really important to note is that if you're planning on going with the 13600K and a B660 motherboard, make sure you get one with a BIOS flashback, uh, like this one here, the ASRock Pro RS B660. Uh, if you don't have BIOS flashback, you actually won't be able to get the 13600K up and running without a 12th generation CPU. Because B660 was for 12th generation Intel CPUs, this one here, however, just really easy to update with BIOS flashback, and then you can use the 13600K with this motherboard, and then yeah, you've got a really affordable, really high performance motherboard setup. So looking at the total entry cost, the 13600K and 5800X 3D come out about even, whereas the entry cost for the 7600X lands about $100 more. Keep in mind that that's also with bottom of the barrel DDR5 memory, which will be a few percent slower than the 6000 megahertz CL30 that I've used for all of these benchmarks. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the benchmarks and the performance. And starting off with some production workloads and rendering, this is actually where you're going to see the biggest difference between these CPUs. Those extra cores and threads on the 13600K specifically really go a long way in boosting performance. Here it's almost 60% faster than the AMD 7600X despite having the cheaper entry cost. When we render on a single thread though, that's where we can see the new AMD 7600X pretty much you know, matching the Intel chip, whereas the 5800X 3D, which is a previous gen chip, that trails behind by a pretty significant 27% margin. So bottom line here for these production workloads, you know, multi-threaded stuff will definitely have the 13600K pulling a decent lead over both the 5800X 3D and the 7600X, which will be pretty closely matched. And then the more single-threaded stuff, that's where the 7600X will basically catch up and tie the 13600K. And in this specific workload, creating proxy footage in Adobe Premiere, there is a difference between using entry-level DDR4 and premium DDR5. Using 6000 MHz CL30 DDR5 nets the 13600K k about a 20% gain compared to using entry-level DDR4. We'll take a closer look at this workload in just a minute because the memory scaling is actually pretty insane. Now it's when we switch to gaming that the inclusion of the 5800X 3D in this comparison starts to make a bit of sense. In Doom Eternal this thing is just a monster. It actually beats the 7600X by a couple of frames while using much cheaper memory. The 13600K also isn't too far behind when using ultra-fast DDR5 but here using cheap DDR4 does slow it down by a fair chunk. 
You won't see that slow down in most games though. Forza Horizon 5 has the 13600K right at the top of the stack, and clearly this game is not picky about memory speeds at all, basically the same experience here whether you're using DDR4 or DDR5. And again, we see the 5800X 3D definitely holding its own against the 7600X. It also does in Cyberpunk. 1% lows are maybe a bit worse off, but still very competitive performance on average, which is great to see. The 13600K is the most impressive here though, in my opinion, topping the stack with DDR5 and still top 3 with DDR4. But in F1 2022, the picture looks a bit different. Clearly at this point, the faster CPU really depends on which game you're testing. Here it's actually the 7600X which pulls out in front, but had we run this chip with entry level DDR5, we'd probably be seeing performance here a lot closer to the other two CPUs. Of course, it goes without mentioning that we're picking apart some very small differences here most of the time, and these are some of the most hardest CPU bound gaming scenarios that you can create today. Either way, those cheaper DDR4 setups are definitely holding their own. In fact, in Horizon Zero Dawn, both the 13600K and 5800K. 800X 3D are faster even when the i5 uses DDR4. Now, I'll agree, this result doesn't make much sense for the 7600X, it should definitely be towards 7700X performance, but after many retests and double checking graphic settings and memory settings, I kept getting the same result. Valorant, however, has the 7600X in front of both. However, you might argue that it's actually the 5800X 3D that has the best performance here with the strongest 1% lows. It's kind of mind blowing the performance actually that that chip is delivering amongst the current generation. And while there is a measurable difference between cheap DDR4 and premium DDR5 in Valorant for the 13600K, there isn't at all when looking at CSGO. So it really depends on the game, and especially when we're comparing some of the cheapest DDR4 against some of the fastest DDR5 that you can get your hands on, yeah, it does make sense that some games will experience a nice boost, but let's break this down and take a closer look. In F122, for example, it's pretty interesting. You're actually better off using entry-level DDR4 compared to entry-level DDR5. It's only when using the fastest DDR5 memory that you can currently get your hands on that DDR5 DDR5 starts to show its advantage, and again, it's not in all games. In Cyberpunk, for example, they're all pretty evenly matched. Maybe 1-2 to two FPS between them on average, and slightly stronger 1% lows here when using DDR5, but that's it. Then in Doom, nice performance bump between DDR4 and DDR5 as a whole here on the 13600K, and then very small scaling upwards as we increase the DDR5 memory speeds. And then here's a quick look at that video editing proxy benchmark. It's one of the rare benchmarks that I've seen to really lean heavily on memory speeds as you can see here. You definitely won't see this across all video editing scenarios though, but if you're doing a lot of encoding and transcoding, then it is definitely something to consider. And then a quick look at power draw. Full load here in Cinebench, the 13600K pulls the most power out of the three since it has the most cores, and how much peak power it sits at really depends on which board you're using. Here in fact, the B660 motherboard that I used for DDR4 testing had the 13600K pulling about 20 watts more than a flagship Z790 board. That doesn't necessarily translate to more power draw in gaming though, here the 13600K actually pulls slightly less than the 5800X 3D. So those were the benchmarks, and if you're even more confused now after seeing them than you were at the start of the video, then I honestly don't blame you because they were some very mixed results, uh, especially when we take a look at the gaming performance. It really is interchangeable between these three CPUs, you don't know which one's going to come out on top depending on which game you're looking at. Production workloads on the other hand, I think we can agree that's pretty clear cut for the 13600K, so I mean straight off the bat, if that's the stuff that you're interested in as well, then the i5 is definitely looking like the better pick. The other recommendation here is that if you currently have an AMD Ryzen 1st or 2nd or 3rd gen system up and running and you're looking for an upgrade, I'd highly recommend just going with the 5800X 3D, especially if you're just interested in gaming performance. That way you can just update your motherboard BIOS, drop that CPU in, and get an instant performance uplift. I honestly think you'd be crazy to do anything else, considering how fast that CPU is. Now the biggest opposing argument that I see against doing this, you know, going with the 5800X 3D these days with a B550 motherboard, and instead going with a 7600X with DDR5 on a 
nice fresh platform is that that nice fresh platform has extended support. You know, four generations is what AMD are saying for AM5. And yeah, that is a thing. You know, future generation Ryzen CPUs are definitely going to be faster than what we have here. And DDR5 memory is only going to get faster. I do think it's weird though, you know, especially if we're talking about gaming performance, for people to be so eagerly considering these future upgrades, these future CPUs that don't even exist yet for one, and especially when you consider how fast these three CPUs already are. And with exactly that in mind, you know, how fast these CPUs are when it comes to gaming, it's hard to even picture upgrading every second or third generation. Maybe every fourth generation, like if you buy at the start of the platform and you want to upgrade towards the end, kind of like what we've done here with the 5800 x3d like if you have a first gen ryzen chip and you upgrade to a 5800 x3d that is going to be a massive performance uplift for your system and you don't have to upgrade your motherboard or memory essentially with amd's new am5 platform you could do the same thing in another four years but again that is really up to you how much that argument weighs and i have said it previously you know for production workload systems ones that are doing rendering and they are heavily focused on the cpu and saving the most amount of time as possible that extended platform support does make sense being able to upgrade your CPU every generation or two without also upgrading you know an expensive motherboard and switching to a different socket that is very very valuable to have but for a gaming system which you know you really shouldn't be upgrading the CPU that often especially when you have the kind of performance that we're looking at today it just doesn't make as much sense in my opinion now if you don't have an older Ryzen system where you can just drop in a 5800x 3d and instead you're building something from the ground up that's where I'd actually recommend going with the 13600k gaming performance on average is pretty interchangeable between this and the 5800X3D. Both are absolute monsters, but you are technically getting more for your money on the Intel side. The fact that this has 14 cores in total means that multi-threading performance is a decent bump ahead of the 5800X3D, and even if you're not going to use those extra cores and threads now, it might be useful to you later. And with the entry cost being about the same between the two, I do think the i5 seems like the slightly better option overall. Now a few more things that I noticed running the 13600K on a B660 motherboard uh firstly just really important to reiterate that bios flashback you really do need one with that feature otherwise you won't be able to get it up and running secondly you won't be able to overclock the 13600k on this board Overclocked memory profiles are fine. You'll be able to run pretty much whatever DDR4 you want, but overclocking the 13600K here is just not something that you can do. And thirdly, the 13600K on this board is actually power limited over long duration. So if you're doing long renders, uh, long encoding sessions and stuff like that, that's where you might want to go for a Z790 or Z690 board, or maybe one B660 board, which has both BIOS flashback and doesn't have a power limit enforced. Here you can run an unlimited power limit for about 225 seconds but then the cpu will drop to 125 watts which is still respectable but of course you do want to get the most performance out of the 13600k if those long rendering sessions and encoding and stuff like that is important to you this isn't an issue for gaming you're just not going to be hitting those kind of power levels anyway so gaming performance really doesn't matter that that long duration power limit is enforced now that might sound like a lot of catches and quirks but it's really not when it comes to gaming and as you saw you're still getting superb performance realistically both the 50 800x 3d and 13600k are killer options for a fresh build today in a nutshell you've got better multi-threaded performance on the i5 but better motherboard options with the 5800x 3d and taking a step back it's really hard to be disappointed with either one as for the new ryzen 7600x it's kind of average if i'm honest uh, considering that the entry cost is 100 more than the other two that we've looked at for that kind of money you'd expect more performance but we just don't get that so 13600 k 5800x 3d are definitely the better options here and probably leaning towards the 13600k overall uh, gaming performance is just really really strong and those extra cores are nice to have on hand too but really that or the 5800x 3d can't go wrong with either one so i'll leave them both linked down below as always a huge thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one